Uh, today we do things a little bit differently here. Uh, each and every year, the first Sunday of Advent, here in the contemporary service, uh, we have the decorating of what is known as the Jesse tree in the traditional service later on at 11. Uh, we have the decorating of the Chrismon tree with various Chrismons. Um, this is a Jesse tree. It is named after Jesse, who was the father of King David and therefore ancestor of Jesus. The concept for this Jesse tree is based on Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, where it famously says, A shoot shall arise from the stump of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. A stump indicates that something has been cut off or cut down. Historically speaking, Babylon in the year 587 B.C. destroyed Judah and the Davidic dynasty. So the covenant seemed to have ended and all hope was lost. And yet there was a shoot from the stump and we believe that that shoot was Jesus over 500 years later. <laughs> we have some eager participants this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting to get to the Jesse tree, my God. That's close, though, Ann. Thank you. All the ornaments uh, are ants that we will come up and hang momentarily <laughs> are ancestors of Jesus uh, mentioned in Mark and, I'm sorry, in Matthew and Luke's genealogy. So uh, the familiar cast of characters, Adam, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Rahab the prostitute, Ruth and Boaz, John the Baptist, the Virgin Mary, and Joseph. So if you think of our own family trees where we have all our ancestors, uh, this would be Jesus' family tree. And the metaphor of a shoot coming out of a stump is not only something historical, as I just explained, with world empires, Babylon and Israel and etc., but also oftentimes our lives can become stumps if we feel that something is cut off or cut down. So we look for the shoot coming out of that stump, and that shoot is Jesus. Your hope and my hope, the hope of the world. When you hear the band reading the verse that goes with your ornament, then you may please come forward <laughs> and hang it. When you hear the band reading the verse that goes with your <laughs> ornament, Please come forward and hang it. <laughs> Isaiah 11, verse 1. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Genesis 15, verses 5 through 6. He brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Good job, Nico. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told, it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named after you. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Thank you. 
Genesis 2018, verses 12 to 14. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Exodus 3, verses 1 through 6. Moses led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Joshua chapter 6, verses 22 through 25. They burned down the city and everything in it, only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab, the prostitute, with her family and all belonged to her, Joshua spared. Her family has lived in Israel ever since, for she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. <laughs> Ruth chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. And the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. Ezekiel. Oh, sorry. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 24 through 25. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. They shall live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, in which your ancestors lived. They and their children and their children's children shall live there forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning at the end, beginning at the end. The God had three in one, Father, Spirit, Son. chapter 40 verse 11 he will feed his flock like a shepherd he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep mark 1 verses 6 to 8 now john was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey he proclaimed 
The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1, verses 35 and 37 through 38. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. We have a profound, mysterious religion. Christ came to earth 2,000 years ago. The ornaments you see before you testify to scriptures portraying a time 2,000 years prior to even that. That's a total of almost 4,000 years. Our Christian faith has stood the test of time. God has been active in human affairs and human history for millennia now. God has acted in times good and bad, in joyous times and in challenging ones. Through people noble and ignoble, through people righteous and unrighteous. In the end, the will of the Lord is done. Without any doubt, Paul writes to Timothy, the mystery of our religion is great. He was revealed in the flesh vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, and taken up in glory. The last word is grace. The last word is love. See how great. 